Hello everyone, I'm Denise Watts with What's Happening Right Now and today is April 11th. We're in Corona at the Shiawassee County uh, Courthouse. Jerome Kowalski got his first hearing today in front of Judge Matthew Stewart. With me today is Jerome's son, Jerry. Jerry, how do you, how do you think it went today? I was a little disappointed that um, we we're being shot down again and that um, I think it's kind of a shame that um, I think uh, Judge Stewart um, didn't look at the whole picture and understand the whole thing that we've been through this before. Um, it's been an unfair trial the first time and um, now we're just asking for um, some added support. We're not asking for all of my father's legal fees to be paid. We're asking right, for so assistance. Let's, let's, let's tell him though that there was two motions today. One was to have Jerome's legal fees paid for by the county since he did not receive a fair trial to begin with right. and spent all his money on his first trial and second was to uh, have Bill Valiancourt, our Livingston County prosecutor, recused from the case and uh, judge, the judge denied both motions. Right, they were both denied. They weren't even like considered, and I just think that, again, that uh, considering what has come out of um, Val Mr. Valencourt's offices um, from our past trial, I don't think it's um, fair that um, they should even be involved in this. Um, because right, so because how can Livingston County prosecutor, which they're they're part of this whole mess, they're the part of the, how how it got all messed up. How can they be biased now and, right. and and prosecute this trial again? They don't want this trial to come out in Jerome's favor. They want him to be found guilty again, so this can all go away. So none of their secrets can come out. Well, Mr. Valiancourt had stated in that article that said that he was just under the impression that this was just to cause a more of a public spectacle. The only spectacle that's been caused is what's come out of his offices with Judge Brennan. The dishonesty, the lies, the, the perjury, the perjury, the and just the, the just the downright nastiness of her as a person, a judge, and a human being. And so I don't think that he should be talking about public spectacles when there, the public spectacle is there in Livingston County. But, but, but that's how these kind of any kind of thing like this goes. They accuse you of what they're doing. Right. That's how that's how that works. Right. Now, the, Judge Brennan also today was the uh, JTC asked for her removal of off the bench. So now I guess so. it goes to the Supreme Court. So you know what this is? This is just a yo-yo game. Let's let's cause more money. Let's let Jerome sit in the jail right. some more months. Right. And so now the next the next court date is until September 23rd before the, even the trial can start. So yeah, so it's again, it's just disheartening to find out that um you know, all we're here to do, we're not here begging for money, we're just here asking for support because if we all recall, Judge Brennan didn't allow all of the witness, especially one false confessions uh, witness we had. She cut him off, she had to start her vacation, he couldn't come back next week. We weren't given that fair right. And so that's what we're saying. You know what? Maybe we need some extra money to help pay for those things that we were not given the right to the first time around because of Brennan's ignorance, because she had to get on a plane and leave for the weekend. Well, if you're doing a murder trial, you got to clear out your schedule. You can't take the time and tell, tell us that we can't have our witness. And he, she wanted the witness to come back. He couldn't come back. He had family plans. He was there for Thursday and Friday. We were never aware that she was going to be cutting us off short. It's just one of many, many instances where we haven't been given a fair, things haven't been done fairly or correctly or, um, you know, in, in Livingston County. And what's, your, just, what's your impression of the judge? Um, I wasn't too happy with um, just uh, how you know he handled things. I just felt like he was very, a little bit, um, I don't know how I should say it, but a little bit arrogant with what, how he handled things and how he, you know, I think he came in there already and he just knew that he had no sympathy for us or what we've been through or um, all of the money that's been spent and all the heartache and hardships we've been through. And this isn't something that you just do it and get it done and be done with it. It's right, something... and that is how he seemed. He had no compassion. Right, that's he, the word, he compassion. Was, he was... It was it was almost like he was arrogant. Yeah, you know, I mean, I just which is sad because yeah, that's so where we, we that's again. where we were with Brennan. Yeah, it's we like don't we need got a male male version of Brennan. We don't today. need arrogance in the courtroom. We don't. We no. need fair 
people compassion. and we need compassion because it's not one-sided and this is a somebody who I feel is going to make everything sound one-sided and there's way you, you're talking about a man who has absolutely no evidence no DNA nothing tying him to the scene no motive, and it isn't no all and it is this is also justice for my aunt and uncle who have been right. wrongly wrong who have been wrongly killed and we need to find out who did this so they can pay and have we can have uh, you know we can have justice served it's them also that we're doing this for not just my dad but right. them it's like people we need it full circle the, yeah we so need this is like circle. a common set this is almost like a common sense um case when you, you don't yes. have to be a lawyer or a judge when to figure this out. When you have no evidence, no DNA, to pull off a crime like that, you cannot do, have no evidence, no DNA, nothing tying you to the scene. Period. Done. I don't care what a jury says. That's, it is what it is. The evidence was there. That's the way it goes. So anyone following this, uh, you know, keep praying for Jerome Kowalski. Keep Please. praying for the family. Please. For um, everyone involved in this because we have an innocent man. Le next month, it's 11 years he's been in a county jail and a state prison for two murders he didn't commit. That's what this is about right here. And so please keep your prayers up. And um, yes, please. We thanks for watching. Share the, the, the video and uh, love and peace. That's what's happening right now with Denise.